Back in 2017, according to General Tony Thomas, a leak to the media, the media outlet turned out to be the New York Times, foiled an attempt to kill ISIS leader Baghdadi. The information was made public through the New York Times, so it put American forces in danger, and President Trump had to call off the operation. Take a look. Uh, there were points in time when we were particularly close to him. Um, unfortunately, there were some, some uh, leaks about what we were up to at that, about that time. Um, you know, when, when we went out after Abu Sayyaf, the oil minister, who was very close to him, one of his personal confidants, uh, he didn't live, but his wife did. And she gave us a treasure trove of information about where she had just been with Baghdadi in Raqqa, you know, days, if not, you know, within days prior. And so that was a very good lead. Unfortunately, it was leaked in a prominent national newspaper about a week later, and that, that lead went dead. So the prominent national newspaper was the New York Times. Two years later, this weekend, President Trump commands an operation that kills ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. And Democrats like Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff have their panties in a wad because they were not briefed about this raid ahead of time. Why on earth would Trump tell them? Trump is right. Adam Schiff is the biggest leaker in Washington, D.C. Just look at the impeachment inquiry, for example. Look at the secret hearings. The cherry-picked information Schiff leaks to the press to try to substantiate his ludicrous accusations against the president. And yes, look at the leak that foiled the raid in 2017. Maybe if the Democrats cared a little bit more about the good of the nation and a little bit less about their hatred of Donald Trump, maybe then the president would trust them. But I wouldn't trust them because Obama's former Joint Chiefs Vice Chair James Winnefeld went on TV and bashed President Trump after the successful mission this weekend, accusing the president of, quote, piling humiliation on ISIS because the president described Baghdadi as whining, crying and screaming as the terrorist hid behind his three children, using them as human shields as he faced American forces. But Winfeld claimed this was unseemly of the president to describe this and compared it to Obama's treatment of the bin Laden raid, saying, if you look back at the bin Laden raid, we treated his body with respect that is due under Islam. Respect that is due under Islam? What does this even mean? First of all, American troops shot bin Laden's face off. Second of all, are you insinuating that bin Laden, the violent Al Qaeda terrorist who killed 3,000 Americans on September 11, 2001, in the name of jihad, is an accurate representation of Islam? Because I thought you liberals were always telling us that it's offensive to say the phrase radical Islam because it's insulting to Muslims to conflate their religion with radical Islamist terrorism. You can't have it both ways. But that's the point. The Democrats and the mainstream media are so partisan that they leaked information about the 2017 raid to the press, which could have put American lives in danger. The Democrats are so partisan, they'd rather gently eulogize the leader of ISIS rather than admit President Trump commanded a great victory for our nation. The Democrats are so partisan that they claim they want unity in our nation but the one time we have an opportunity to come together as a whole nation, Republican and Democrat, conservative and liberal, and celebrate the death of the leader of ISIS, the Democrats choose to hurl shade at President Trump instead. At least you can see their true colors for yourself.